Yo, what's going on guys, Tanmay here for Simple Snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms. And in this video tutorial, as the title of the video suggests, we are going to be writing a C++ program to implement stack and its stack operations. So this is the part two under the stack topic. And in the previous video tutorial of this playlist, we took a theoretical representation and understanding of what exactly is a stack data structure, how it operates, that is the different modes that is first in last out or last in first out. And we also saw the different stack operations as well as some applications. So that video was pretty much theoretical, but we also saw behind the scenes what happens. And we also tried to visualize what exactly a stack looks like by taking a diagram. So if you have missed that video, do check it out. I will drop the link. But if you are just here for the implementation, that is the actual C++ program for stack operations and stack implementation, then this video is exactly the right one. And you can see a time code wherein you can directly skip to the coding part. But before we jump to that coding, I just wanted to take a quick look at our approach that we are going to be using to write the C++ program to implement these stack operations. So as you can see on the digital blackboard, we have the eight different standard stack operations, which we are going to be implementing in the C++ programming part. But I just wanted to discuss quickly how our algorithm and how our approach is going to be. So here is a representation of a stack. So you can see we have five positions of the stack. So this is something that our stack would look like items will be going in like this. So that would be push. Now we've already discussed all the theory part before and then they would be popped off from the top, right? So that's how the stack works first in last out or last in first out. So here let's take an example of a stack with a size of five. So you can see we have five memory blocks. So I'll start from zero because we're going to be using arrays to implement stack. So this is index position zero. Then we have one, two, three and four. Okay. And this is going to be the top of the stack, right? So how do we implement all these functions in terms of a programming language in terms of the implementation part? So the idea here is we will be creating a class in C++ programming and I hope you know the object oriented programming concepts. If not, I have a complete C++ programming playlist also. So what we will do is we will create a stack class. Okay. Inside that we will have an array. Okay. As a data member, we will give a hard coded size five just for understanding purpose. You can do the dynamic memory allocation part and take in the size of the stack separately. So we are implementing array as a stack. Okay. So we are going to be using array to store the values, but it is going to be operating like a stack. Okay. And one very important thing that we are going to have is a variable, which is known as top. Okay. And initially it will be assigned a number of minus one. Okay. So it is going to be integer variable. Now what this top variable is going to do is it is going to keep a track of how many number of elements are inserted in the stack. So as I mentioned, initially the top is going to be having a number of minus one. So essentially, if this is zero, let's imagine minus one to be somewhere over here. Okay. And the top variable initially will be pointing over here as minus one when we have no values in the stack. So let's say I push a value, which means I add a new value inside the stack. Let's say I store five. Let's assume that our array is going to be an integer type array. Okay. So I'm going to push a value of number five. So it's going to be added at the bottom of the stack, right? In this case, what we will do is we will say top plus plus. Okay. Which means we will increment this from minus one. And now the top will be pointing to the zero location or it will be storing a value of zero. Okay. So do note that it is not a pointer. We have a concept of pointers also in C++, but this is a simple variable, which is just storing the location number. Okay. So right now top, when we do plus plus top will have the value of zero, right? Similarly, when we do pop, what we will do is we will say top minus minus, which means again, top will be pointing to minus one or top will be having a value of minus one and not pointing. Don't confuse yourself with the word pointing right now. It's not a pointer. It's just a variable. Okay. So that's the concept of push and pop wherein we will keep a separate variable named top, which keeps a track of the position number. Okay. Similarly for other operations like is empty is full. When we have count, we have change, we have peak and we have display. We will be extensively using this value in the top. So let's say we want to check for is empty. So what do we have to check is if top value is minus one. So when top is going to be minus one, it is going to be pointing or it is going to be having a value of minus one, right? It is going to be storing minus one when the stack is going to be empty. So we just have to check for if 
the value inside top is equal to minus one. And then we can say that the stack is empty. Similarly, if you want to check if the stack is full, what we have to do is we have to just check if the value inside top is equal to four. So when the top value is going to have four, we can say that the stack is full, right? And then similarly, we can get count. We can use the change by accessing the index position since it is an array. So we will pass the index position of the array and change the value in the stack. We can also peek, which means we can access the item at I position. Now peek and pop is different. Pop will just remove the topmost element. Using peek, we can access any of the element and not remove it. Pop will also access and remove it. Okay. So pushing is going in and pop is getting it out from the top of the stack. Then we have display. Display is displaying all these data values inside the stack. Okay. So this was a little bit of visual representation. And this is important if you're a beginner to understand how exactly the code is going to be working. And now you'll understand the code very easily. So let's actually get into the programming part. Let's open our Dave C++ ID where we will actually type in the code. Okay. So as you can see, I have already opened up my Dave C++ ID. And for those who don't know, this is a very old school ID for C++ programming. If you have code blocks or if you're using NetBeans or if you're using Microsoft Visual Studio ID, everything is good to go as long as you're comfortable. I've been using this ID for a long time for C++ programming, so I'm going to stick with it. I'll drop all the links if you want to download this ID in the video description. Everything will be there in the video description. So you can check out the description as well. But now let's get started. If you're new to this ID, just go to file new and just create a source file and save it somewhere as .cpp. I have already typed in a little bit of code, which is basically the structure of the C++ program. So we have the two header files. We have using namespace standard and all. And this is the class that we are creating. So I've named the class as stack. Inside that we have the private and public access modifier. So inside the private, obviously we have two data members. As I mentioned, we are going to be declaring an array. So it is going to be an integer array of size phi. Now the reason why I'm hard coding this is because we want to keep it simple. You can also take the size of the array dynamically from users, but that will just increase the little bit of line of code. And then we have the integer variable top, which is going to be keeping a track of the number of entries in the stack, right? Now inside the public section, we are going to be implementing all the operations. So starting off, let's first create a default constructor. I hope you know the basics of object oriented programming, especially the oops concepts. That is the classes and objects, the constructor and functions concept. That's all you need. And as I mentioned, I have a complete C++ programming tutorials playlist that would be more than enough. You can check it out if you have any doubts in the programming part. So let's create a constructor. So I'm going to say stack. Now inside the constructor, I'm going to assign top as minus one. So the constructor is obviously called whenever we create an object for the first time. So for the first time, obviously everything inside the array is going to be nothing, right? So our stack is going to be empty. So that's why I'm also going to create a for loop starting from in I to I less than five and I plus plus. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all the entries in the array as zero, because obviously when you create the stack object for the first time, the stack is going to be empty, which means everything inside the array has to be assigned as zero. Okay. So that's what we are doing in the default constructor, which will be called whenever we create an object. So this is simple. Fair enough. Now let's start implementing some basic functions or the operations. Let's start off with is empty. Okay. So I'm going to have a return type of bool, which is Boolean because our is empty function is going to return true or false depending upon whether the stack is empty or not. Okay. So I'm going to say is empty. Now remember we were checking for the value inside the top variable. So what we will do is we'll say if top equal equal to minus one return true else return false. Okay. So since this is having a return type of bool, we have to either return true or false. So we have to return some value, right? And what we are going to do is we're going to check if the top value is minus one. And if it is minus one, it means that the stack is empty, right? Because when we create a stack, we assign the top data member value as minus one because there is nothing inside the stack, which means that it is empty. So that is what this function is checking for. And I'll tell you why we need that. That is why we need this is empty and is full method because we have to check for two conditions that is stack overflow and stack underflow also. So you'll quickly understand when we move ahead. So now let's create another 
method which is bool is full okay so this function is going to check if the stack is full or not so here i'm going to say if top equal equal to 4 return true and we don't need brackets if there is only one statement in the if block i'm going to say else return false okay now the reason why i'm equating it with 4 that is one less than the size is because we know that the array index starts from 0 and initially the top is going to be pointing to minus 1. So when there is one value inside the stack, the top will be incremented and the top will be pointing to 0, right? So if there are 5 elements, which is when the array is going to be completely filled out, the top is going to be having a value of 4. So that's why I'm equating it with 4. So you'll understand when we actually run the program also, we will dry run and we will see each and every step. Okay, so we've implemented two of the eight different stack operations. Let's see what we have ahead. Okay, so let's implement the first important stack operation that is the push operation. So I'm going to say void push and we need to pass some value, right? What value are you pushing into the stack? Now we know that our stack is kind of like an integer stack because it has an integer array. So it can only store integer values. So I'm going to say push int val. So I'm passing an argument of integer type which we will pass in the program, which will be stored in the array. Okay. Now, before we push any value in the stack, we need to know whether the stack is full or not, right? So if the stack is full, then we cannot push any extra values. So that's where this Boolean is full method is going to come into picture. By the way, when the functions are inside a class, they are known as method. So if I jump or switch between function and method, they are one and the same right now. I tend to mix up those two words. Anyway, so the first thing inside the push method is we have to check for is full. Okay, so I'm going to say if is full, then you print a message C out and print the message stack overflow. Okay, and if it is not full, so in the else part, so obviously when I call this method is full, it will return true only if the stack is full, right? And if this part becomes true, the if block is going to be executed and not the else part. But if it returns false, then the else part is going to be executed. So this is where we can actually push the value that is this int val into our array, right? So now you have to imagine that for the first time, the value inside the top variable is minus one, right? So we have to first increment that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say top plus plus. Okay, so now the value inside top is zero. And now what I'm going to say is ARR of top equal to value. That is this val value that we passed as an argument. So for the first time, imagine top plus plus, which means top becomes zero over here. So for the first time we are saying ARR of zero, that is at the first position of the array, store this value that we are passing in the push method as parameter. Okay, so I hope you have understanding. Now the next time you push again, the top will be incremented by one. So this time top would be one. And then this new value will be stored at this one location since array index starts from zero. So that's why we started from zero. Okay. Seems fair. So that's our push method. Similarly, let's create the pop method. Now for the pop method, the return type has to be integer because what happens is pop removes the first or the element on top of the stack and it is returned, right? In push, we are not fetching something. In push, we are entering some value. In pop, we are removing the first or the top of the stack value and removing it off completely. So we have to return it. So that's why I'm giving a return type of this method as int. And then we'll name it as pop. And here we don't have to pass any value because we want some value outside. We, we want to remove some value from the stack. So let's do that. Again, here we have to check whether the stack is empty or not. So if the stack is empty, we cannot remove off any value. We cannot pop off any value, right? Because there is no value at all. And when I'm saying there is no value, it means that the value is zero. Okay. It's not like there is nothing. It means that the value is zero. So you'll understand when we actually run the program right now, just follow along. So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to say is empty, which means I'm checking if the stack is empty. And if it is empty, I'm just going to copy this and print stack underflow. So that's another condition, but we have to still return some value, right? So I'm going to say return zero. 
But if it is not empty, what we want is we want the value which is at the top of the stack, right? So I'm going to say else. Now, obviously, the value inside the top variable is basically the address or is basically the index of the array, which is pointing to the top of the stack, correct? So whatever value we have in this top variable is always going to be the index position of the top location inside the array, right? So what we will do is we will say int pop value is equal to ARR of top. Okay. Now, since we are removing that value off, we have to make the ARR of top zero also. So that's something that we do after we store the actual value inside this pop value variable. This is a temporary variable which we are creating inside because this is the value that we are returning from this pop method. Okay. Then we make that value as zero in the array. And we also have to decrement the top variable value by one. So I'm going to say top minus minus. And lastly, I'm going to say return this temporary variable pop value. So I hope you understood what we did over here. So basically what we did is we took the value which was there on the top of the stack and we stored it in pop value. Then we made that same top of the stack value as zero because in pop, we also have to make it zero. That is, we have to remove that value off. And then we reduced the top value by one. That is the value inside the top variable by one because now then it will point the lower index. Okay. And then we return that value. So this has to be in the same order. If you change the order, the output will be different and it will go wrong. So this is basically the pop function or pop method. Let's see what is left out now. So we've created four important methods in the stack operation, implemented the four important operations. Let's implement the other ones. Let's implement the count operation. Now the count returns the number of items we have in the stack, which means how many values are there inside the stack. So it returns some value. So that's why I'm going to say int because our stack is an integer stack. That is, it is storing only integer values in the array. Always the return type is going to be int. I'm going to say int count. Here I'm just going to return top plus one. Because remember the value stored inside top is the index position, which is always going to be one less than the actual number of values inside the stack, right? So that's why you have to do plus one and return it. And that's about it. This is very small operation, small method. Let's move ahead. Let's implement the peak operation. So I'm going to say int peak. Now what peak does is you pass a position. So we have to pass a position. So I'm going to say int POS and whatever position you pass, that is the index position. The value at that position is returned in this method. So that's why the return type of this method is int. Okay. So first, obviously we'll have to check if the stack is empty, right? So I'll say is empty. If it is empty, we will copy this code and we will just print it over here. But if the stack is not empty, what we will do is we will simply return the value in the array at the position that we have passed over here. Okay. So it has to be POS. So this is not the pop method. So in the pop method, what we were doing is we were just popping off the top of the stack value, but here we are passing a particular position inside the stack. And depending upon that position, we are just accessing that value. We are not deleting it in pop. We have to also remove the top of the stack, right? So that's why peak is a little different. So this is the peak method. Let's move ahead. Now the next method is change. So in change, what we're doing is we have, we are changing the value inside the stack, which means we are changing the value inside the array at a particular position. So here we need two informations that is the position as well as the value. So I'm going to say void change. So we are not fetching any value. So that's why the return type is void, but here we need to pass two informations. As I mentioned, we need to pass the position as well as the value that is supposed to be changed, right? That is the new updated value. Now, once we have the position as well as the value, the only thing that we have to do is we have to say ARR of position is equal to value and just print a message item changed at the location. Okay. Or you can say value changed at the location and the location is passed over here. Okay. So that's about it. Now, the last operation that is left out is the display operation and display operation as the name suggests is going to display all the values inside the stack. 
in a descending order which means that the array has to be printed from higher value to the lower value so that it looks like it is a stack which means that the value at the zero index position has to be at the bottom right so here's the method i'm just going to directly print it because it is very basic so this is that display method inside that i'm just saying all values in the stack are and i'm starting from i equals to 4 that is the index location 4 which means that it is the highest value index of the of the array and then i'm doing i minus minus so array index 4 would be printed first that is the value at the array index 4 then 3 then 2 then 1 so it will look like a stack okay so you'll see when you actually see the output and that that's when you'll actually understand but these are all the different operations that we've implemented so far and i know the code is actually going a little lengthy and i'm going a little slow because i want you guys to understand it thoroughly and now we can move to the main function so everything that we were doing that is creating this entire class you can see is outside the main function and now our complete class is ready so in the main function what we have to do is we have to create a menu now depending upon the option that we select we have to call this individual function right so we have eight different operations so we will create a menu which has eight options and depending upon what option number we select we will call that particular operation now we can create that menu based system using a switch case and we will use it inside a while loop so it can be iterative also so let me just quickly type in the code you will easily understand what i'm talking about now first things first i'm going to create an object of stack and three variables option position and value so you'll understand why i'm creating that and the next thing that i'm going to do over here is i'm going to say do and i'm going to say while so i'm using a do while loop because we want a menu driven output which will give us some options so that's why it has to execute one time for sure right so that's why i'm using a do while loop i hope you know the difference between do while and while and here i'm going to say while option not equal to zero and then inside this i'm going to actually create a switch case so i'm going to give each operation each stack operation an option number starting from one to eight and if i input zero then i exit the program so that's the ideology over here so i'm just going to paste the entire printing part over here so if i print it out over here this is how the code would look like i'm just basically printing a message on the command prompt so i'm first saying what operation do you want to perform select the option number and enter zero if you want to exit so whenever i enter a zero obviously the do while loop will exit right so that's the condition until and unless i do not enter zero this do while loop will keep on executing so then the option numbers are one two three four five six seven eight with the individual stack operations push pop is empty so let me add the bracket over here now the option number nine is just to clear the command from screen so there's a quick function that we can call i'll show you but this is just what you see on the command prompt now when you enter one something should happen that is the push method should be called right which means that we have to use the stack object dot the push method so that has to be done in a switch case because we have multiple options over here so now what we'll do is we'll first take c in and we'll take in the option so this is why we created the integer int option over here so we'll take this from user and now we're going to use switch case so i'm going to say switch option inside that i'm going to say case one colon and i hope you know the syntax of switch case now case one we have to use push right so what we will do is we will say c out enter an item to push in the stack then we will take that value so this is that value variable which we created in the main function at the top and we will say s1 dot push and we will pass that value because our push method requires something as an argument so this is that push method and you can see we have to pass an integer variable as argument so that's why we have to pass some value all right so this we will do from the user end from the command prompt so this is case number one let's see case number two so i'm going to say case two colon case two is pop here i'm simply going to be printing out the top of the stack value right so i'm going to say c out pop function called and i'll just say popped value is s1 dot pop now here we don't need to pass any argument because this method does not need any integer variable argument it just removes off the value which is at the top of the stack and it makes it zero in the array 
right? So you'll see that in the output. So that's about it. Let's see case three. Case three is is empty. So I'm gonna say case three colon. So here I'm just gonna say if s1 dot is empty. If it is true, I'm just gonna print stack is empty. Else I'm gonna print stack is not empty. That's about it. That's case three. Similarly, we have is full. So case four is also gonna be similar. So this is case four. The reason why I'm directly copy pasting the code is because then otherwise our time is gonna get wasted. It's pretty similar. I'm just gonna say s1 dot is full. If it is full, we will print stack is full. If not, we will say stack is not full. Simple as that, right? Let's see case five is peak. So let's make that case five colon. Here the first thing that we will do is we will say enter the position of the item you want to peak. Now when we are calling peak method, we want to access the value in the stack at a particular position. So we want that position from the user, right? So we will take that position from the user, and this variable is the position variable that we created over here. Okay. So that's why we created three variables: option, position, and value, because we are going to be using them in the switch case. So once we take the position, we will simply pass that position in the peak method, which is used by calling s1. Now s1 is our stack object which we created at the top over here. So we're going to say s1 dot peak, and since it returns some integer value, I'm just going to say peak function called and value at position. Then I'm going to print the position number. Again, I'm going to say is space, and then I'm going to print that value. Okay. So I hope you are understanding this. This is very basic stuff. We've already created the major coding part. That is the major stack implementation. This is just creating that menu-based system. Let's see case six. Case six is count. Again, pretty basic stuff. In the case six, what we are going to do is count function called. Then we are going to say number of items in the stack are s1 dot count. Simple as that. One line of code. Let's see case seven. Case seven is change. For the change method. We are going to say change function called, and then we are going to say enter position of the item you want to change. So first we need the position, and then we are also going to say enter the value of the item that you want to change. Then we'll take in the value also. So that's why the position and value variables that we've created at the top, and then we are going to say s1 dot change. So once we have the position as well as the value, we can pass those two parameters in the change method because it is expecting two parameters. Okay. So this is also basic. it took a few lines of code but i hope you understood this let's see the last method that is display in fact i'm just going to print all the last cases that is case number 8 is display wherein we are saying display function called and s1 dot display very basic case 9 is where i said that we want to clear the screen clear the command prompt for that we have a inbuilt function that is system and in opening and closing round brackets we just have to pass the cls this is predefined this will clear the system if you are using turbo c++ we have to add that header file conio.h i guess and then we have to call clr scr right so that is pretty much similar to what this function is doing and then we also have a default case if you in case enter some improper number we will say enter proper option number and this is pretty much it you know our complete program for implementing the stack is ready with all the standard operations now what we'll do is we'll just save this and let's see if we compile and run this in the first go i am expecting that we will probably get some error but let's see if this works i'm going to say go execute compile and run and there you go you know our complete program ran successfully and this is how our command prompt is looking like right now let me just expand it a little bit okay so this is the entire menu based system that was printed off so if you come to the code right now what is happening is in the do while the first iteration has been printed our stack is created these three variables are created and now we are presented with the menu and options so we are waiting for a input from 1 to 9 number and if you enter 0 the program will exit let me just show it to you you know the default code got executed because 0 was not a case over there you can add a case 0 also over here if you want i'll say case 0 colon and inside that i'll just say break okay just to break it out from the switch case just save this again and compile and run so now if i enter 0 over here the program exits okay 
But other than that, if I enter any of these one to nine values, let's see what happens. I'm just gonna run it again. Okay, so let's first do one thing. We will print the entire stack. Now, remember when the first time stack is created, that is the stack object is created S1 over here. The default constructor is called, which means top value is minus one and everything inside the array of the stack is actually zero. Okay, so let's see if everything is zero. Let's hit option number eight for display method, hit enter. And there you go, display function called all values in the stack are zero, 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 zero. And you can see five times zero. And then again, this menu is shown. Now the reason why this menu is shown is again is because until and unless you do not press zero or do not enter zero, this menu is not gonna go. That's how we've created the functionality. But you can see that display function is called and all the values are zero. Now the bottom value zero is at index position zero because the printing happened from top to bottom. Remember we printed all the values from position number four to position number zero, right? Okay, so the display is done. Let's see if the stack is empty. Okay, let's hit option number three. There you go, you can see stack is empty. Stack is empty was printed. Let's see if stack is full. Let's enter option number four. You can see stack is not full because stack is empty, right? So we saw is empty is full. Now what we'll do is we'll first clear the screen. So I'm going to enter nine and the entire screen is cleared up. Let's push some value inside the stack. So I'm going to say option number one. When I hit enter, I'm being asked for a value. So it's saying enter an item to push in the stack. Let's enter one. If I hit enter, the value is actually entered, but I'm not showing any prompt. But to see if some value is entered or not, I can call the display method, right? So before showing display, I'm going to clear screen. So hit enter. Now I'm going to say eight. So eight is display function. Let's see if the value one is stored at the bottom of the stack. If I hit enter, now there you go. Display function called all values in the stack are zero, 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 zero. But you can see over here, the last value is one. Now this is at index position zero. Okay. Because you're printing the array in a descending order so that it looks like a stack. So push is working perfectly fine, right? Let's see if pop is working. So right now the top of the stack is one only, right? Because we've entered only one item in the stack. So it is already on the top of the stack. So when I say pop, this one should be turned to zero, right? So let's see, let's call pop. I'm going to hit two and I'm going to hit enter. So there you go. Pop function called popped value colon one. So we got our value, right? And now all the values inside the array should be zero back again. So let's first clear the screen and now let's call display again. So I'm going to say eight. So there you go. Now you can see the last value again becomes zero, which means that pop value worked perfectly fine. Now, remember we had two different situations that is stack overflow when the stack is full and when you're trying to push in more values or when the stack is empty and you're trying to pop off more values. So right now the stack is empty, right? So let's call is empty. Let's say, let's see if the stack is empty and there you go. You can see we are getting stack is empty. So if I just clear the screen right now, okay, I hit zero by mistake. So the program executed or exited. Let's compile and run again. Okay. So I again ran the program and now the stack is obviously empty, right? So if I say three and enter stack is empty. So if I try to pop now, which means that I'm trying to pop off some value from the stack, but there is no value already in the stack, right? So it should again give us stack underflow. So let's try to do that. I'm going to say two and there you go. You can see stack underflow pop function called pop value is zero because obviously there is nothing in the stack. So that's why we are returning zero and you can see stack underflow message is being shown. Now let's push five values in the stack back to back. So I'm going to say one, I'm going to push one again, call push. I'm going to push two again, call push, push three again, call push, push four again, call push and push five. Okay. Now if I just clear the screen and if I say display, that is number eight, you can see one, two, three, four, five. So all the stack value are full. That is the array is full inside the stack. So if I try to push one more value, it should display a message of stack overflow. So let's see, I'll say one. And I'm going to try to push six, but there you go. You can see stack overflow. 
so stack overflow and stack underflow conditions are checked now what we can do is we can change the value also right but let's see first count so i'm going to say 6 count function called number of items in the stack are 5 so let's pop one out i'm going to say 2 pop function called pop value is 5 now i'm going to clear the screen and now i'm going to say let's see what the count is so initially the count was 5 now the count should be 4 right so let's say 6 and there you go you can see count function called number of items in the stack are 4 if i pop one more time and now if i call 6 that is the count function you can see the number of items in the stack are 3 so here it was 4 now it has become 3 let's clear out the screen let's display the stack we have 1 2 3 and 0 0 so the top of the two stack are popped off now what we'll do is we'll try to change the value at the very bottom position using the change method so i'm going to say 7 enter the position so we know that the bottom value is 0 position so i'm going to say 0 enter the value so at this position i want 50 and i'll say enter and you can see value changed at location 0 now if i actually try to display i'll say 8 and there you go now at the bottom position we have 50 we have 2 we have 3 we have 0 0 right so everything is pretty much working fine we did push we did pop is empty is full peak count change display clear screen everything is done and this is the entire stack implementation our program is working perfectly fine now before we conclude this video i just wanted to talk that there are multiple ways in which stack can be implemented this is just one way using arrays and this was the most simplest form because we hard coded the size of the array also inside the stack you can do it in a dynamic way also but just for the representation purpose of all the stack operations, I wanted to keep this program as simple as possible. Lastly, I just wanted to say that I hope the idea of using the top variable is clear. Remember that this is not a pointer. This top variable just stores the index position of the top of the stack. Okay. So that's the way we are able to access all the different values. We are able to see whether the stack is empty. We are able to see if the stack is full or and different other conditions okay so this is really important okay so that's it for this video guys i know this was a little lengthy but we had to write the program code right from the scratch and we have completely successfully implemented the stack and its stack operations in c programming so if you like this video if you understood the complete stack implementation program please give this video a like let me know in the comments how this video was share it with your friends as well and if you haven't yet subscribed on this channel make sure to subscribe so that you get notified whenever I upload such cool videos on this channel. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Peace.